here. So again, this is going to be a video about things you can do to save money currently right now with ammo prices being ridiculous. And sure, I guess if you want to go out and you want to buy super expensive ammo and then go train like you normally do, I mean, if you got the money for it, have at it, enjoy. But for the rest of us, I think it's smarter to look for alternative ways uh, to train. And a lot of these are actually things that you should be doing all the time anyways, but we generally don't because ammo for other stuff is expensive. So this is kind of a good time to focus on what priorities you've kind of overlooked because you're used to just buying ammo all the time, going to the range or doing whatever. So these are some skills and I guess equipment, guns, whatever you want to call it, the things that you can do to kind of save money right now. So the first one is going to be long range shooting. So this is an aero precision build I did. Well, the upper's an aero precision. It's a 18 inch barrel. Uh, the bottom's just a hodgepodge parts put together. Um, has an A1 stock. And the scope, for those of you who are wondering, is a SWFA. It's a fixed 10 power scope. It's a really nice scope. I really like it. Um, and for all you that are wondering, it's empty. So anyway, so something um, that y'all may not have thought about is again, long range shooting. Now this still is a chambered and is a 223 wall barrel. So it can shoot 5.56 five, or 223. It's supposed to be more accurate with both of those rounds supposedly. It's a pretty accurate gun. Um, but whenever you're shooting long range, you generally aren't just blasting away using every bit of ammo you have. You're usually a little bit more precise with your shot. So a box of you know 20 rounds or a couple boxes that you shoot 40 rounds that'll last you you know a good 30 minutes 45 minutes depending on how you're shooting or what you're doing so um, one thing I like to do is whenever ammo prices are how they are you know I'll take two boxes of 20 rounds and I'll go out to the long range that we have uh, local and they have a I think it goes out to 800 yards it might be a thousand but anyways it's a really long and they have berms uh, at unknown distances with steel targets at those unknown distances so it kind of gives you practice shooting in different ranges. Generally, we shoot at the 300 yard plate uh, that's out there. It's the closest steel plate that they have. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can shoot a lot less rounds and save a lot of money by doing that. And this is a practical skill. So whenever you're shooting something like this, you're focused more on precision and you're focused more on your trigger pull and all the things that you should be focused on anyways whenever you're doing all the tactical high speed operator stuff. Um, but it's a good way to uh, practice and make sure you're doing things correctly And again, you won't go through a whole bunch of ammo whenever you're shooting something like this So this is a really good way uh, to still be able to shoot the same calibers you have still shoot the same guns You have but just kind of use it in a different way and this is a skill set you should know Anyways, you should have some sort of long-range DMR whatever you want to call it uh, rifle, but anyways, so that's number one So the second one, um, this is actually the very first rifle I ever bought, and it is a Mosin Nagant. Now this one's been, and don't say it's bubified because technically it hasn't been. Uh, I hate when people um, sporterize military surplus guns. This one, I actually went out of my way to make sure it wasn't bubbled. Um, so this stock I actually bought. Um, on, I think it was AIM Surplus, it may have been j, &J Sales, I don't remember anyways, I bought it probably seven years ago. I bought the stock and it came with the rings and that's all it was, was just the stock and rings. I think it was like 20, 30 bucks, something like that. Maybe it was 40. But anyway, so the rifle itself, I still have the original stock it came with and all the original hardware and everything for it. And this uh, scope mount is a brass stacker scope mount. I don't know if they're still in business, maybe they are, but it, you just knock out the two pins that go through and hold the uh, rear sight on and it's basically just got some screws and uh, washers and nuts that go on here and hold it in place. Now the scope on here, <laughs> it's an El Cheapo, it's AIM, A-I-M, got on Amazon years ago. And it's a two to seven by 42 for those of you wondering. I think it was about 40 bucks, maybe it was 50, I don't remember. Um, I've had two of these. The first one we had lost zero just about after two or three rounds because this thing is a uh, stout, has stout recoil. So the first one that we got, um, it would not hold zero with this thing. So the second one we got, I've had this on here and I bet I've fired at least three to 400 rounds um, through this particular gun. Again, we're shooting out about 300 yards and the scope has pretty much held zero so far. Um, again, it's kind of a uh, ugly looking gun, but I added all this on there just because it was fun. And again, this is my very first rifle. And for all of you again who are wondering, I can restore this to its original condition because I still have all this stuff. Uh, in the other room but and I have a bunch of other Mosins they're all uh, and more collectible than this one this one's just a standard 1942 round receiver nothing special about it 
Um, if y'all hear a bunch of birds chirping, it's because hummingbirds right now are all feeding. So there's that. All right, so sorry for that interruption. Uh, neighborhood start getting noisy. But anyway, so my wife actually just brought out food to me, so that's why I didn't stop it. Um, speaking of my wife, she's actually the one who did the snuck. She actually, I sanded it down, or she sanded it down, and then she stained it this, uh, I think it's like a walnut or something like that, I don't remember. But, and also for those of you who are wondering why there was an orange plug in the end, if you notice that, uh, that's an earplug that I use for the range. Uh, on all my military surplus guns, after I clean them really well um, and oil them, I usually put a plug in the end of the barrel just to help keep moisture out, because I live in a very humid environment, so just, I don't know if it helps or not, but it seems like it would, so I just do that, so if you're wondering, that's why. And also, in case you're wondering, it's also empty. And the bolt on this one, because I've used it a lot, is buttery smooth. So, anyway, so the reason why I bring up the Mosin Nagant, and really you could say this for just about any military surplus gun, I'll show you a couple others here in a second. Um, the ammo for these right here, which is 7.62x54R, uh, this is surplus stuff. The surplus stuff is pretty much the same price as modern production now. So honestly, I, I don't know why you'd buy surplus ammo because it's corrosive and you gotta clean it out special. It's not really worth it. Just buy modern production ammo. But you can buy new ammo for this thing for about 50 cents around. Sometimes you can buy it a little bit cheaper. Still, that's cheaper than 5.56 is going for currently. So bring out your military surplus guns, especially those that shoot this specific caliber. Bring out your Mosins, have some fun at the range with it. Um, again, I love military surplus guns. That's what originally got me interested in firearms to begin with. And then I slowly got interested in all the tactics stuff with my job and people I hang out with. So surplus guns are a great way to save money, especially if you already own these things. And even now, you can still find Mosins and a lot of surplus guns for two to $400, depending on what kind of condition it's in, what it is exactly. So. If you look around, you can still find these for pretty good deals, and I'd say pick one up because they're a lot of fun. And again, right now, it's cheap to shoot them because the ammo prices, one, uh, they haven't changed at all, and then two, the ammo is still available. So take advantage of these. Um, they're a lot of fun. And just uh, be prepared to have a sore shoulder after a day of shooting this. A few other surplus guns uh, that you might get into, and I'll show you these. This is not all the surplus guns I have, but this is just a couple. So another one that I've noticed that ammo price is on, and again, you can see it's unloaded, other than in the chamber, and you can't see that from here, you just have to trust me. But this is a, a Romanian Tokarev. So the ammo for this one, you can actually get, it, I don't think it's changed in price really at all. It's uh, still roughly the same price, um, if you can find it in stock. Uh, generally, the, some of these calibers are kind of hard to find in stock anyways, but people aren't looking for this caliber, so you may find it online or wherever, so it, it'll be the same price as it was before all this happened. Uh, same thing with this gun. Now, I just keep this, never buy one of these holsters. This is the very first holster I had, and I carried this Makarov for a while. Um, this is an Uncle Mike's little soft kangaroo pouch, absolute garbage. Do not buy one of these things. But again, I didn't know at the time, so I've mis made mistakes so other people don't have to. Uh, I just keep it in here because it keeps the gun in better condition keeps it from getting scratched. Um, again, this one, as you can tell, empty. Um, but I absolutely love shooting surplus guns. They're a lot of fun. And again, the 9mm Makarov is a little bit easier to find than, say, you know, regular 9mm. And the prices, again, haven't really gone up on this. Um, I've seen uh, 9mm Makarov ammo in stock in multiple places online. And so, again, if you own one of these guns already, you can get one of these Tokarevs for about 200 bucks. Like, they are super cheap. Uh, so you can get one of those $200. If you look around, you can find Makarovs for probably around $300. Uh, so it may not be worth the investment to buy one of these right now just to shoot it. But if you're already in the market for one of these, these haven't really gone up in price. And ammo hasn't gone up in price. So enjoy shooting these while they're cheap to shoot. And the last surplus gun I'll show you. And now I will say... The ammo prices on this specifically haven't gone up or down, but it's kind of expensive to shoot. This is a Nagant revolver, and I can verify, yep, nothing in the cylinder. So this is a Nagant revolver. Uh, it shoots a really obscure round that usually it's about, mm, I think last time I saw it, it was about $23 for a box of 50, so it's you know roughly 50 cents a round. So it's kind of expensive uh, to shoot anyways, but it is in stock. So again, just another reason to have surplus guns. Um, they're really fun and they're historical. All right, so the next thing on the list is going to be 22. Um, 
there's a lot of different, you can buy specific guns, I guess, in 22, uh, like I have here. This is a Smith & Wesson MMP full size, it's a 22. It's actually made by Walter and Smith & Wesson just slapped their name on it, but you can tell it's empty. I'm probably worried about it. Um, I absolutely love this gun, but I absolutely hate the trigger. So I just, I hate the little hinge design, I just think it's stupid. Um, and it just feels weird in my hand. I'm used to shooting locks, so this feels weird in my hand. But for those of you who aren't used to it, you may like it just fine. But this is actually my wife's first gun, and she was very recoil sensitive, and she hated loud noises, so this gun kind of serves multiple purposes. One, it's super cheap to shoot. Two, it was a way of getting my wife into guns. And three, it's a useful training tool for people, again, who are kind of like my wife, weren't used to guns. So it was a good way to kind of teach them uh, basic handgun fundamentals. Uh, without being like, where they'd have to worry about like recoil or all this stuff like that because especially weaker shooters uh, Women younger kids even guys that are, aren't as strong um, a lot of times will have trouble controlling recoil on certain calibers So this is a good way to kind of teach someone the fundamentals, but all that aside uh, 22 even right now. It's still dirt cheap. It's always been cheap uh, There was a time back when Sandy Hook happened that 22 got Basically the same price as 9 millimeter and people were stupid for buying it in my opinion um, but right now, I bought this bucket. I think this bucket was, I don't know, has, let's see, how many rounds does it have in this thing? It says 1,400 rounds on here, and I think it was about $80. Got on Sportsman's Guide a couple months back, whenever all this stuff first started happening. But I have a couple of these buckets just laying around, and I will go through one of these, you know, maybe every year or two, something like that. Um, but 22 is still dirt cheap to shoot, so there's no reason not to have a gun to shoot 22. And when it comes to, like, say, an AR-15, I don't think buying a 22 caliber AR is really all that smart. I have one. I have a Smith & Wesson MP15-22 and it's a really nice gun. Really reliable. I've only had a couple malfunction. It was always ammo related. But this exists. So let me take off this little cap. So this is a CMMG, CMMG uh, bolt conversion. It's a 22 bolt conversion. You can just throw this into your AR. You take out the bolt carrier group in your current AR. Put this in there instead. And now you can shoot 22 out of your AR. Now granted, it's not gonna be as accurate as a dedicated 22 barrel, but I'm shooting out to 50 yards and I don't notice a difference. It's still hitting pretty much point of aim. So I absolutely love this thing. Um, it's pretty durable. Uh, I would be a little bit worried about getting this damage, but again, it's it's still pretty durable. I haven't ever dropped it or anything, but I haven't any problems with it. Uh, the nice thing about this is one, it's super reliable in every gun I've tested in. Maybe I just got lucky, but I absolutely love this thing. I've tried it in probably six different ARs and all of them is functioned flawlessly. I haven't had any malfunctions other than, again, 22 ammo related. Um, the one weird thing to note about this one, and it may have just been my model, but whenever I first got it, like the first magazine I shot through it, so probably was like 15 to 20 rounds I think I loaded in that mag, uh, this thing would malfunction in a weird way where it would fire two rounds. So it was basically two round burst. And I contribute that to probably having a burr or something somewhere on the metal where it wasn't cycling all the way back enough to reset the hammer. So I think the hammer was probably just following the bolt home and just restriking the next round. I don't know for sure, but after that first 15, 20 rounds, it stopped doing that. So the only thing I can imagine is that happening. Um, but a good thing about getting a 22 conversion bolt, one, again, cheap ammo, but two, you can get practice with the same firearm an AR-15 that you're used to shooting all the time so if you have a home defense rifle or a duty rifle or a gun that you have that's your go-to rifle you can throw this in there shoot cheap 22 not have to go through expensive ammo and still get a lot of the same good fundamentals and training down uh, that you would do with your normal AR-15 now obviously recoil management you know noise I guess if you count that will still be different um, but weapons manipulations, uh, switching shoulders, you know, all the, all the kind of like muscle memory stuff that you build is still all gonna be the same except for recoil control. So, something to take note, I mean, if you disagree, that's fine, but if you buy a specific 22 gun, instead of one of these, you're, one, it's gonna cost more money. And this comes, I think, for this pack, it came with three mag, because they are all 30, because I don't believe my stuff. Um, I think it was about 150 bucks for three of these, and I believe these will take Smith & Wesson and MP 15 22 magazines. I'm, pretty sure about that not 100 percent, but these magazines work perfectly fine so just buy these um 
but again, I absolutely love this thing. Um, you can buy a dedicated 22 rifle if you want, that's fine. Um, but I see more benefit to buying something like this over buying another gun that you're now going to have to try to set up either identical to the other gun that you have, or you're going to train on something completely different than the rifle you have. So now you're training on two different guns, and saying that's the same isn't exactly true. So if you can hear all the neighbors with loud stereos, sorry. But so 22 is probably the most obvious on this list of things that you can buy to save money right now, but it's definitely a valuable. Next thing on the list is going to be shotgun ammo. So I don't shoot my shotgun a lot. Um, there's very limited roles that I believe a shotgun is useful. I think round per round, obviously a shotgun is devastating. Like no, one's, no one can argue that. But I think short of maybe room clearing, home defense kind of things, there's, or say, I don't know if you have to breach doors and you have the specialty rounds that are designed to blow out locks. Um, there's not a whole lot of use, in my opinion, for a shotgun anymore compared to, like, say, an AR-15 or even a handgun. Um, but shotguns are still a blast to shoot, obviously. Um, so one thing that you can still buy, and it's all over the place. I just went to Walmart today and looked at the shelves, and there's literally cases of birdshot. So obviously birdshot isn't something you do want to use for home defense or anything. If someone tells you you should use birdshot for home defense, don't listen to them about gun stuff anymore because they're 100% wrong. Um, you can fight me on that all you want. Don't care. You're wrong too. Um, so I have a 12 gauge and again, this is number eight shot. You can buy a box of a hundred of these for I think around $20, $22 somewhere there at Walmart. So this stuff's pretty cheap to shoot too. And again, it's all over the place. So why wouldn't you? So pull out that shotgun that you haven't shot in a while, blow the dust off of it, clean it off and go to the range and shoot. You can either shoot skeet if you have something like that available to you, which we do at our lo local range. Or you can use um, birdshot like this um, on, say, steel targets or whatever you want. Just make sure you don't buy the steel shot because it will bounce off of steel targets. Make sure you buy lead. Um, so that's kind of a short and easy one, but you can buy buckshot and slugs. I've still seen all over the place, too, if you want to train with that. But most of my training I do, usually I do with birdshot. And then at the end of the day, I'll fire five to ten rounds of buck and uh, slugs just because they're more expensive. And But this is what I do most of my training with. Plus, it's fun to shoot skeet. So that's the next one on the list. All right, so the last one on the list, it's kind of a twofer, um, is gear. So this is a representation of gear. This could be also, but this is also a representation of medical. So inside this pouch right here, I have a med kit. This is actually um, just a military surplus bandolier that I got on, I think, Amazon or eBay. I don't remember where. It was like $8. And I use this to hold uh, four magazines and a medical kit or a a small medical kit, I guess, in the middle pouch here. And this is what I keep in my truck with my uh, truck gun. So most people prioritize guns and ammo over gear. And I understand why people do it, because guns and shooting is a lot more fun than buying gear is. But at the end of the day, you still need the gear. And a lot of people will then try to cheap out on gear. They'll buy, you know, a $50 red dot side or something on Amazon and just slap it on their gun and call it good which I've done before, I'm guilty of it too, um, but don't do that bad. Um, again, the part of the channel is to try to find cheaper gear that is still affordable, but still good. So eventually we'll go around to maybe doing some of the more budget red dot sites on Amazon or whatever, but I digress. So uh, gear, so one, stop buying overpriced ammo. If you're spending 60 cents a round on your 5.56, you could be utilizing, you're basically paying three times the price or double the price, depending on what you normally found ammo for. So that money that you were, say, spending, you know, $250 for a case of a thousand rounds, 556. Now you're paying 500 or 600 for a thousand. You could have been using that 200 to 300 dollars to buy something like this. This is a long fry um, ballistic helmet. It's from Botac. It's 200 bucks. So that money that you were spending on 556 and basically wasting two to three hundred dollars more, you could have bought something like this. Now, granted, this isn't the nicest helmet on the planet, but it's pretty useful. Um, so you could buy a helmet, you could buy that plate carrier, you could buy better body armor than what you have currently. Uh, there's a lot of things that you should put on your list, and that's something you can do right now, is uh, make a list of all the stuff, gear, that you need or should have and you don't, and start prioritizing that stuff right now because it'll be probably six months to a year before ammo starts coming back down to normal prices. So instead of wasting your money on inflated priced ammo, buy other stuff you actually need. And this stuff hasn't changed in price. 
Um, the Ear Pro hasn't changed in price. Flashlights haven't ch changed in price. The helmet hasn't changed in price. This little IR visible strobe hasn't changed in price. Um, so buy stuff like this. And on the other side, people like buying the Pew Pew stuff, but they don't like buying stuff like medical. Um, they don't want to spend a lot of money on uh, medical gear because medical gear is expensive. So a North American Rescue uh, tourniquet, 30 bucks. You have chest seal, which I think is about $15. Um, you have Israeli bandages, which are like 10 bucks. They're not super expensive. So, but right there, you know, you're looking at say $60 just for a basic medical setup. And that's not even all the medical you really should have. That's just like the bare essentials. So people don't want to spend $60 on that because they're like, oh, well, I could get a bunch of ammo for that price. Or, hey, that's a... Uh, you know, close to, I don't know how expensive ARs are currently, but you, back in the day you could get ARs for about 400 bucks for say Palmetto State Armory and build it yourself. So you're like, oh, that's, you know, a lower receiver uh, that I could start building into a new gun. You don't need more guns, you need more training or you need more equipment um, that you don't already have. So, and now granted I'm guilty of having lots of guns too, so I get it, it's more fun, but prioritize either medical, gear in general, or equipment um, instead of buying overpriced ammo. So, that's kind of my list of things that you can buy right now. Um, there are other things you could be buying right now too, sure. Um, comment down below if you have other suggestions or things that people can buy. But just be smart about how you spend your money, especially right now, don't go wasting your money on overpriced ammo. So hopefully this video helped you. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, put them down below. Um, hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy this kind of content. Uh, if you have any suggestions for videos, just let us know. All right, appreciate you. Have a good one.